60s surfing golden era dive watches, 80s digital water sports watches from some familiar faces, 90s extreme sports era watches, surfing specific watch companies, tides and technology, and even some luxury brands getting in on the action. Let's learn about the wonderful niche of watchdom that is surfing watches. Now surfing has an amazing history which is likely a longer one than we know about, but the folks that were the embryo for what would become the modern surfing phenomenon are of course the Polynesians, with them bringing the sport to Hawaii, Northern California, a brief stop in Bridlington, Yorkshire in England, and of course Australia. Some key events in its popularisation were of course the celebrity of Duke, and we did indeed have cultures that would emerge with associated fashions within these localised areas. For example, we see Manhattan Beach surf clubs, adoption of an early form of board shorts, evolving into the Velsley surf scene, with individualised fashion choices such as Greg Bull and his jailhouse style board shorts coming out of that. But the mainstreaming in the US of surfing is often attributed to the Gidget film in the late 50s, which would set the platform for the golden era of surfing in the 60s, with things like the Beach Boys, documentaries like The Amazing Endless Summer, and the prominence of major brands with board shorts by companies like Hang 10. Of course, there'd been water-resistant watches available from the late 1920s, early 1930s, with the Rolex Oyster and the Omega Marine, with the Omega Seamaster from 1948 being a dominant force as an everyday water-resistant watch. In the early 50s, we'd have proper diving watches with the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, Zodiac Seawolf, and of course the Rolex Submariner, with 1962's Dr. No being a prominent display of the watch next to a beach. From what I can tell, to the extent to which surfers in the 50s and 60s wore watches, I think that it was largely using these diving style watches. We can see that Rolex were aware of this submarket with the surfing referenced in posters at the time. Today anyway, the majority of the Beach Boys are known to wear Rolex. And in the classic surf documentary The Endless Summer in 1966, one of the protagonists is wearing a Dacor branded diving watch quite prominently. We can see Seiko tapping into this zeitgeist with this 1968 poster with their sports diver, slightly different from the more hardcore 62 mass diver market. It's more of a guess than a fact, but I would think that similar style watches like a Turner and Doxa were likely used, and other brands I've seen that seem to have targeted surfers are Zenith, Longines, Alster Surf and Ski, and perhaps Bulliver with the surfboard, although I couldn't tell whether this was descriptive or actually used by surfers. In the 1970s, we of course start seeing digital watches, but these aren't yet water resistant and are still relatively expensive, so that you wouldn't take them in the water. 1980 to 81 was the first 100 meter water resistant digital watches with the Casio Marlin series, and Seiko were also doing digital water resistant watches around that time. From the early 80s, we can see marketing of Casio watches for the water sports sector, with surfing and windsurfing imagery used with swimmer watches in 1981, including heavier duty water resistant watches like these 200 meter version snorkeler watches, including titanium iterations, which were the precursor to 1983's G-Shock, which we'll come back to. Now Seiko had their silver wave line that had grown out of their original attempts at analog sports dive watches at around 50 to 70 meters in 1961, as well as the sports 100 range. Whilst I'm at it, here's some fun Seiko surf timers. However, the first company to really build the whole brand around surf watches was Freestyle in Southern California with their Shark from 1981. They claim to be the first purpose-built surf watch. As Hadinki nicely outlines, they predate Swatch with the neon drenched crazy coloured plastic watch look associated with the 1980s. The straps were a particular focus and very linked into surf culture with the Velcro leash, named after leashes used on surfboards, and the clip coming later. There are limited details on when it was introduced, but what would be unique parts of the brand were the so-called hydro pushers, which meant the buttons could be pressed underwater, and the night vision, which was their version of the electroluminescence technology, presumably in the 90s. After some adventures under different forms of ownership, they would broaden out their range of watches to try and compete with Casio and Timex. More recently, they've come back to their roots with a focus on shark watches with lots of retro looking styles, including a tide watch as well as straps for Apple watches. Some watches that showed a more focused effort to launch specialist watches for surfing from more mainstream bands were the Surf Timer from Casio starting in 1990 with the DW403 with 200 meter water resistance, including a tachymeter bezel and countdown timer nicely designed for use in timing the heats within surfing competitions I presume. Not technically a surfing watch but I can't help but show you this super cool Citizen windsurfing watch from 1989. I think there were a couple of others in this series. Another angle was the 
introduction of tide displays on digital watches, with one of the first ones I've seen being more used within the fishing context of the 1989 fishing time. We'll come back to these. Of course, surfing was still totally cool in the 90s with films like Point Break coming out in 1991. I believe Bodie played by Patrick Swayze wears a quartz Navitimer Pluton in the film, and the dominant reign of Kelly Slater beginning. But it has to be said that skating culture, which was originally an offshoot of surfing known as sidewalk surfing, was now beginning to become an even bigger force than surfing itself. ESPN was noting the growth of these more action-oriented sports and from 1993 they started forming the idea for what was the first Extreme Games in 1995, which would become the X Games in 1996. Skateboarding bringing with it other extreme sports going very much mainstream after Tony Hawk's Pro Skateboarding came out in 1990. Although surfing will always have California Games in 1987. Action was of course the zeitgeist typified by characters such as Sonic the Hedgehog and the Sega brand, with PlayStation and Tomb Raider taking on the mantle in 1996, with us all I'm sure owning Billabong, Quicksilver, O'Neill and other such brand hoodies and shorts. In this context we see the release of the Casio Extreme series in 1996 with the DW003. In the same year we would see the Fisherman G-Shock with Tide function, which would carry over to the 1999 Gulfman. More general models would also have surf links such as the Surf Rider Foundation series, Triple Crown Surfing, ASP Surfing World Tour, Surf Life Saving Australia, We Love Surfing, and US Open Surfing collaborations, as well as this cool Endless Summer 2 model to commemorate the sequel to the classic film in 1994. The specific watch model would focus in more on surfing functions with the G-Lide range, starting, I believe, in 1999, with the DWX100 and GL100 and GX. L1110 in 2000 and GL151 and 160 in 2002. G-Lide versions of the classic square would appear with the GL200, with the GL190 and GL201 are coming out in 2003. 2004's GL220 and GL230 I believe were next and in 2008 and 2009 respectively we would see the tide graphs added to the front of both the 5600 and 5500 squares with the GLX and later GRX 5600 and 5500 with the 60 900 getting into it I believe in 2010. The most recent additions to the surf focus lineup are the GBX 100 which is super cool and really nice and legible which includes a night surf version more recently and this super cool Kanoa Igarashi special edition. Around 1989 we would see the Timex K28 surf watch with digital thermometer and the bug for storing your lip balm, other smaller items and 50 meter water resistance. The Timex Wave Rider I think is just essentially the same watch, but I don't think it includes the thermometer, with the Timex Brave Wave being a surf themed and a digi watch. More recently we see the Timex Allied Tide Temp Compass and I've no doubt that there will be an Iron Man or two on surfers wrists over the years. Another surfing dedicated brand making watches from 1989 was Rip Curl with the broader company being founded in 1969, making surfboards in Torquay, Australia. A slightly different Torquay from the Basil Faulty one. The heat bezel was one of the features that they claimed to be unique to them. Apparently loads of these watches got returned for water damage as they weren't waterproof enough. They claimed to be the first surfing ocean tide digital watch in 92, with the surfing industry's first analog tide watch being claimed by them in 1995. The tide watch would be the basis of their watch division, with the sleep mode being something they were particularly proud of. The first digital compass in a surfing watch they claim was theirs in 2006, and they claim to be the first GPS surf watch in 2014, with the Rip Curl Search GPS connected with an app with a later GPS2 iteration. Apparently you're able to see how long the wave is that you've just rode after coming out of the tube and the app creating very nice visuals. They've made a lot of noise out of their links with professional surfers they sponsor. The next Tide series is apparently a slightly more robust option which is designed to compete with smartwatches such as the Garmin Watch Instinct Solar Surf Edition Cloud Break and of course the Apple Watch combined with apps like the Surfline Sessions and Dawn Patrol that are now regularly used for surfing. Of course, the very other surf-centric brand is Nixon, which was founded in 1997, with watches retailing in 1998. Apparently, the team were firing random names at a group of snowboarders, and what they said was that Nixon was this weird association with someone who'd done something wrong once, and that their parents didn't like them which apparently stood in its favour. One of the first digital watches I've been able to see was the Full Nelson, but the Dork Talking Watch 
narrated by Tony Hawk, is a classic. I don't think it's water resistant and it's more a skater culture watch, with the Dictator being a lesser known watch in the same vein. Their surf credentials were boosted with the establishment of the Nixon Surf Challenge in 2000 and they patented the so-called locking looper to stop extra material flapping around, which is something they traded on a lot and licensed out to others. A helpful distinction I've read, which one of their developers talks through in an interview I read, was around the evolution from the basic tide that used global average time between tide events that you would then reference manually to your own beach through manual programming, to pre-programmed tides that were more accurate to your local beast and based on consultation with tide tables and scientists. A fun watch was the marbleized Super Tide in 2014, as well as a Beastie Boys limited edition version of the same watch. The next level accuracy up from that, as even that was forecasted, was live tide data from the company's Surfline connected watch with the Ultra Tide in 2015, which they claimed to be the first real time surf conditions watch alongside other data points, including wave height, swell height and direction, forecasted swell height and direction, wind, water temp, air temp, sky condition and future tide, which opened up 2,700 locations. Essentially, it tells you whether local surf spots are good or epic. They claim to be the first action sports smartwatch with the mission in 2016, powered by Google Android Wear, but this seems to have faded away as an offering now. They designed the Comp watch with the surfer John John Florence, which was a thin, lightweight digital watch with 100 meter water resistance. They claimed to be the thinnest, and a heat timer that had a lockout function which stopped it being accidentally pressed. The heat watch is similar and another favourite apparently of John John Florence, with the staple being their most simplistic surf watch. In 2020, they would launch the high tide model made from reclaimed plastics, which uses the MLCD technology for a much more high contrast display. Their most durable watch, apparently designed with input from current and former special ops forces, is the Regulus watch, launched in 2018 which is their attempt to compete with the likes of G-Shock made tougher through so-called Poron XRD materials with 100 meters water resistance. More of a tactical look than their conventional fare and a stainless steel version was launched in 2019. Other watches from more of their back and current catalogue that can give you a feel for the brand are the Newton with both analog and digital iterations, the Rival, the Siren, Rerun and the Chunky unit. Of course, all the surf brands would at some point have watches as part of their overall fashion apparel, including Quicksilver, Billabong, O'Neill, Animal, and many others that I've not got time to mention. There are three more surf-focused brands I did want to mention though. The first is Vestal, with watches like the Brig Tide and Train, worn by Geordie Smith, and the Helm Surf and Train. The second is Gull Watches, a company with Swedish and Cornish roots, with some basic quartz, colourful analog and anadigi watches, a key feature being their Velcro straps. The third is Werit, founded in Sweden in 2017, and as of 2020 have branded themselves as a luxury analog display surf watch company, with ambassadors being signed up like Ignacio Salazar, Scott Mitchell, Thomas Tadula and Gerhard Weilheim. They have analog style watches that indicate tidal information and weather forecast data from magic seaweed via the hands rather than through a digital display, claiming to be the world's first analog smartwatch. Finally, we get back to some of those luxury watch brands getting in on the surfing market. These include Breitling Super Ocean's deal with Outer Known and Kelly Slater, the Michael Jordan of surfing, who also brought in Stephanie Gilmore and Sally Fitzgibbons. Tag Heuer with the Acura Racer. They've done a deal with Kai Lenny, a very prominent surfer who also does his own YouTube documentary series. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Surf and Turf Editions, including the Jerry Lopez Edition. The Oris Aquis Nomad Surfing Edition and Schindler's Duck Watch, all the way from that notable surf town, Detroit. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this one, you should really take a look at this video on Casio 80s digital watches. Do consider subscribing and liking the video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.